Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. A major heat wave breaks all-time records, if not shatters them this week for especially the Phoenix, Arizona region. And as we go through the week, we have rounds of storms with additional heavy rain and severe weather. And then we look ahead to the long-range pattern as this heat wave expands likely into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. How hot will temperatures get? We'll answer that question later on in today's video but looking again at the current alerts map here this morning we have widespread heat advisories in the orange shade of color this covers much of the arklatex the southern plains and parts of the four corners region and in the pink shade of colors from southern california east to texas hill country and even up here to the little rock region those are excessive heat warnings as we are gearing up for a major heat wave once again across the southern plains Looking here at this uh, map this afternoon at the current weather pattern, you do start to see the ridge of high pressure. The center of that ridge is starting to slowly migrate further to the east. It was centered over here into Southern California recently. Now it's moving across the southern portions of the Four Corners region and now into West Central Texas as we go through the day today. And it's going to continue to expand and elongate further to the east as we go through the week. This is on that Thursday, July 20th time frame, but we still persist over the top with that northwesterly flow across the Midwest and Ohio Valley. That will give us rounds of storms. More on that here in just a moment. But look at today's high temperatures. We're back to 115 in Phoenix. That would shatter the all-time record for the most consecutive 110 plus degree days in that region. It actually hit 116 yesterday in the Phoenix region, but further east into Texas, Oklahoma, southern Southern Kansas, we're into the hundreds again. We're up to 106 in Dallas. That could even be conservative at times. 109 in Lubbock, 106 in Amarillo, even 101 up into portions of Tulsa this afternoon. So make sure to stay hydrated out there. And take plenty of breaks if you are working outside in the shade or an air-conditioned building. That is for sure, because even as we go into Wednesday, much of the same triple-digit heat once again. We're back to 115 there in Phoenix on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we're back to 116 on, in Phoenix and more triple-digit heat in the very same areas. With maybe some upper 90s getting as far east as Atlanta, the Carolinas, and North Florida as we get to that Thursday, July 20th time frame. And make sure you know the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. If you have heat exhaustion, dizziness, thirsty, you can have heavy sweating, nausea, weakness. You want to drink plenty of water to avoid this and stay out of the direct sunlight. Heat stroke is a lot more serious with confusion dizziness as well and then you could also become unconscious as well so make sure to call 911 move the person to a cooler area and cool with water or ice as well while 911 is coming as well so that would be uh that would be a heat stroke so make sure you know the difference stay cool stay hydrated and stay informed and that will get you through the extreme heat conditions across the United States but it's a different story over the top of that ridge where we have more active storms with an active jet stream over the top across the northern plains, the Midwest, and into the Tennessee Valley. We actually have a mesoscale convective system moving through the Ozarks region as of now, and that's with the stronger west-northwesterlies in the jet stream here. That will be pushing through portions of the Ohio Valley, getting through the Midwest and down into the Tennessee Valley through the afternoon and into the evening today. But going back to yesterday, another eventful day of severe weather. We had 202 Two total reports with wind, hail, and tornadoes all combined, but thankfully... We only saw one tornado report as of yesterday in southwest Kansas, but lots of wind damage, lots of hail damage out there going back to your Monday, July 17th time frame. And I'm afraid we're going to do it all over again. If we haven't already started as of this morning, we have a lot of unstable air going up into the middle and lower Mississippi Valley. And that strong, deep reservoir of its stability is going to contribute to this enhanced risk by the Storm Prediction Center across southeastern portions of of Missouri, Southern Illinois, Western Kentucky, getting into Western and Middle Tennessee. This does include the Music City there in Nashville, getting back West into Jackson, Tennessee, Paducah, and over here into portions of Cape Girardeau. 
into Missouri later on today. Also highlighting areas into the Northeast, Eastern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, portions of Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Western Maine. Those areas have a slight risk for severe weather today, and then a slight risk up into the Dakotas as well. So something to keep an eye on there. You can see that mesoscale convective system moving down to the lower Ohio River Valley and eventually the Tennessee River Valley this afternoon. Numerous reports of da wind damage will be possible. We could be seeing hail up to the size of two inches or larger at times and a couple of tornadoes not out of the question this afternoon as that complex moves down through Nashville we still could be seeing some damaging winds that'll push into eastern Tennessee maybe as far south as the Atlanta region as we go into this evening and overnight bringing some isolated wind damage down there but it will be on a weakening trend as it pushes further to the south and east then our attention tonight will shift back up to the northwest with more isolated supercells developing up into the eastern Dakotas with tornadoes, hail, and wind damage yet again. And then as we go into Wednesday tomorrow, another marginal risk of severe storms all the way up into the Duluth region, the Twin Cities, down through Des Moines, Kansas City, and then all the way back here just north and west of the Amarillo area, a smaller marginal risk out here into portions of Virginia and North Carolina. Then as we go into Thursday, this could be another interesting interesting day for severe weather. A couple areas we're watching into the Ohio Valley, back into the Southern Plains, and also in towards the Southeast with slight risk for severe weather on Thursday. This will mainly be for damaging winds and hail, but a few tornadoes also will be possible as we have had the last few days. So we'll continue to watch that. But the total rainfall accumulation, now through the end of the week on Friday, July 21st, there'll be a couple swaths of heavy rainfall, especially down here into Tennessee, southern Kentucky, into southern Illinois, southeast Missouri. Those areas could be seeing a, a rainfall amounts in excess of two to three inches over the next few days. Also, another pocket of heavier rainfall into eastern Colorado, western portions of Kansas, down into western Oklahoma, with one to three inches of rainfall there through Friday. And unfortunately, we're going to be adding on to the totals with already saturated soils up here into the northeast from New York State up here through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. We could be talking about an additional one to two inches of rain through the next few days as we go through that Friday, July 21st time frame. And looking at the flooding concerns, because of the saturated soils up there, we have a slight risk for flash flooding across Maine. Vermont, New Hampshire, portions of Massachusetts there, Connecticut into eastern New York State, even parts of northern New Jersey as well. So take, uh, make sure to keep that in mind for your flash flooding concerns up there. But a moderate risk for flash flooding is in place across extreme southeast Missouri, extreme southern Illinois, western Kentucky, and into portions of middle and western Tennessee. This does include Nashville on west towards J the Jackson area up there toward portions of Paducah. So we'll continue to watch that widespread flash flooding could be possible into your Wednesday. And then that'll shift across middle and eastern Tennessee as we go into Wednesday morning and afternoon. And this will persist through that Thursday time frame with at least a slight chance for a few instances of flash flooding down here by that time frame. Remember, flooding is very difficult to see even during the day, let alone at night. It's impossible to see at night. So do not drive through flooded roadways during the day, at night, or any time. Make sure to turn around. Don't drown. Flooding is very dangerous. Looking at the long-range pattern, going all the way through the very end of July through the 31st, the ridge is not wanting to stop. We're going to see a very large ridge take over much of North America and the lower 48 here with above normal temperatures forecasted by the Climate Prediction Center for all 50 states in the United States here as we go through the end of July time frame. So what does this mean for us? So early next week, the overall weather pattern, the center of the ridge here will be across the Four Corners region as it has been recently. However, the outer edge of the heat will start to expand in intensity across the Midwest and portions of the Western Ohio Valley and down here into the lower Mississippi Valley early next week. But all bets are off beyond there. During late next week and even the following weekend, we could be talking about heat expanding even further north, including the Great Lakes region, parts of southeast Canada, maybe even the northeast as well. So much of the United States will be in, encompassed with this heat wave as we go into late next week and the following weekend there. So just giving you an idea of what these temperatures will be. This is not an official forecast for high temperatures as of now. 
but this is what the temperatures could be early next week. You can see the 90s expanding all the way up into southern Saskatchewan, southern Manitoba there, and even portions of the Dakota. So it goes well north. The 100-degree line goes all the way up here at least into South Dakota early next week. And then late next week, yeah, if this is true, if this verifies, we could have 100-degree heat up into portions of Chicago, getting in toward the Twin Cities there, even as far north as the Fargo region, reaching 90. 99 potentially later on next week. So this is some serious heat that will be taking over the middle of the country potentially late next week and into the following weekend. And looking at precipitation chances during this period, as the ridge of high pressure often does, we have lots of sinking air, lots of sunshine. So that will promote generally at least slightly below normal precipitation underneath that ridge across the Midwest all the way down to the Gulf Coast and then westbound through the Pacific Northwest. There is hope for a monsoon season startup across the desert southwest here across Southern California, the San Diego region, Los Angeles, all the way through the Phoenix area, maybe up into Colorado, northwestern New Mexico, eastern portions there of Utah. We could be seeing that as well. Some of that moisture could actually travel as far north north as Wyoming as we go through the end of the month with above normal precipitation on the eastern side of that ridge across the northeast. They just cannot get a break and unfortunately more rain for them. So the jet stream orientation early next week. Right now it looks like we'll continue with the relatively same pattern as the ridge is centered across the Four Corners region. We'll have the outer edge of that across the Midwest. Some more storm complexes with heavy rain and severe weather will be possible. But then as the ridge builds further north, all the way up to the international border here between Canada and the United States, all bets are off. The, the storm track will shift well up to the north here into the Canadian provinces and be uh, pretty much absent for the United States unless you're into the upper Great Lakes region around northern lower Michigan, the UP, or even the Arrowhead of Minnesota. Otherwise, we're not going to see much rainfall across the United States going in toward portions of next week. So my perspective precipitation forecast early next week. Here's the key on the left-hand side of your screen. This is what we expect. Any precipitation is going to be up here into the upper Great Lakes and upper Midwestern regions, maybe parts of the Ohio Valley early next week. We could have some opportunities. You guys know this time of year, summertime storms across portions of the East Coast and down into Florida as we go into early next week. That continues through late next week, although we still have the same areas that have the chances of rain because the ridge is across the middle of the country so we don't have a lot of precipitation chances across Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. You can forget about the precipitation for the most part through later next week. Although underneath of that ridge, if it builds further to the north a little bit, we could have a little bit of a weakness down here in the monsoon season could get started up a little bit for Southern California, Southern Nevada, getting into Arizona. So for San Diego, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, getting into portions of Phoenix, that would be a nice sight to see with some moisture with all the heat building over the last several days to get some of that nice relief as we go into late next week. Looking at the tropical weather update, we have tropical storm cat Calvin closing in on the Hawaiian Islands as of now. And you see that here on the visible satellite imagery. Pretty nice compact system moving in toward the Big Island here. This is a tropical storm warning for the Big Island here right now as this will pass just to the south of the Big Island as a tropical storm and then move back to tropical depression status by Thursday into Friday time frame. And you do see the total rainfall accumulation for the Hawaiian Islands. Does look like the majority of the Big Island here and a couple of the islands to the north there to actually get a couple inches of rainfall. Beneficial rains as we go through that Friday time frame. Although this will likely cause some flooding as the terrain out here is very hilly, very mountainous. So we'll continue to watch that. A couple inches of rain in a short amount of time could mean some flash flooding. So we'll be watching that. But then across the North Atlantic, we have Tropical Storm Don across this region and this continues to spin across the North Atlantic again very lost at sea this is going to start to move further to the north and west toward the eastern Canadian provinces toward Nova Scotia or just to the east of there as we go through later next weekend likely not causing any major impacts but maybe some waves out here as it does start to meander further off to the north and west but again no direct impacts are expected at this time 
Further to the south, though, is our attention where we have more tropical waves moving off of Africa, but the shear down here and the dry air from the Saharan Desert is so much abundant across this region that we don't have any real opportunity to get any tropical systems to move off the African coast and into the Caribbean anytime soon. But could our fortunes be changing as early as this weekend? So late this weekend, the European Ensemble members are trying to cluster up some low-pressure tracks here just off the west coast there of Africa. Now this is not set in stone, but this is a chance to get something brewing here across the North Atlantic. Even the GEFS ensemble members are clustering up quite a few of those pressure centers later this weekend around the Sunday time frame in the same areas. And in some degree, the GEPS ensemble members are in the same vicinity as well. So this will be something we'll watch through the weekend. Again, not set in stone because of all the dry air because of all the wind shear out here, we have to get rid of that before we start to see robust development. But this is a sign that the hurricane season is starting to upstart very quickly as we get toward the end of July and into early August. And once it does, it will be a long road until we get rid of the hurricane season across the North Atlantic. The reason why I say that is because the sea surface temperatures, guys, this is in degrees Celsius, but anywhere 26 degrees or higher, that's about 80 degrees or warmer across these waters. Waters. And you see a lot of those across the North Atlantic, especially into the Gulf. It's hard pressed to see any 20 degrees Celsius temperatures. They're all 30 plus mainly into the Gulf, into the Western Atlantic here and into portions of the Northwest Caribbean. So any system that develops out here in the MDR the main development region and gets into the Caribbean or the Western Atlantic could rapidly intensify. So we need to carefully watch this over the next couple of weeks. It's nothing to scare you guys. There's nothing happening right now. It's not set in stone, but there's definitely something to watch as we go through this weekend and the next week across portions of the MDR region. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. It's absolutely free to do and you get these detailed breakdowns each and every day on this channel. Also, very important to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps out more than you know, so I appreciate that. If you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates, hit the description down below the video and you can find the link for Twitter down there. It's HWeather420. I do post on that platform very frequently throughout the week. Otherwise, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today, and I hope everybody has a, a great rest of your Thursday out, or Tuesday out there, rather. <laughs>